Well, if you think about Neanderthal, there's a lot you can learn about humans. You can think about Neanderthal and realizing a Neanderthal never crossed a body of water that he did not see land on the other side. But as soon as we had Homo sapiens coming out of Africa, we were on Easter Island. There was no adventure we didn't undertake. This to me is quite wonderful because we can get at the genes that are involved in that adventure seeking, that creativity. Now, if you can sequence Neanderthal, it's quite possible that you can sequence anybody. And we could return, I, I, I know this transition is hard. <laughs> we could return to the original premise, which is let's make practical the sequencing of individuals to have a profound effect on that individual's decisions concerning health care. Again, I was lucky enough to have Richard Gibbs as an advisor, and Richard, Michael, and myself were at a faithful dinner where I always get to have the, uh, the vision, thankfully. They let me, I guess. And I said, let's sequence a human, but I realized it couldn't be me. And so uh, after much discussion, about three seconds of it, Richard said, Jim Watson. Now, I was a young scientist, still consider myself a young scientist, and Jim Watson is not exactly approachable, and Richard says, no problem, I'll give him a call. <laughs> well, not thinking about it, a week later, uh, I'm walking in a mall in Boston, my cell phone rings, I pick it up, and it says, hold for Jim Watson. Uh, Jim invited me up to Cold Spring Harbor to pitch my idea. I hung up the phone, called my mom, said I talked to Jim Watson. <laughs> when I put down the phone uh, and conferred with the team at 454, we, uh, I went up, I visited Jim Watson. I had done a lot of prep, a lot of legal prep. Uh, like Amy suggested, you really have to have informed consent. And I thought about it. There's probably no guy on earth that understands DNA better than Jim Watson, so we should be clean there. And again, I was prepared for a big spiel, but Jim taught me a life lesson at that moment. Before I could finish my spiel, he just said yes. And Jim has told me subsequently, that's the key to advancing anything, and that's the key to advancing science, say yes. Jim said yes, and a billion base pairs into it, uh, we realized at 454 we were in trouble. So once again, we call Richard Gibbs and say, Richard, we need your help. We feel confident we are going to produce 24 million base, billion base pairs. And Richard and his team here, uh, David Wheeler, others literally came to our rescue because it's one thing to carry around 24 billion base pairs. It's another to be able to analyze it. And it was Richard's team in collaboration with the 454 scientists that allowed us to analyze uh, this genome. So let me just tell you a little bit about the work. Uh, we took that machine, we took these plates, and over about a two-month period, we ran the machine 200 times. That means anybody can buy a machine and do this. We ran the machine about 200 times, and we generated these 24 billion base pairs, about 100 million of these strings. And when we analyzed it uh, with our colleagues at Baylor, we found something great. We really had Jim Watson's genome. We covered 98% of it. We found something amazing. We had 3.5% of it, which wasn't in that public consensus uh, database. And we also learned that the quality uh, of our data was exceptional. Quickly again, we have 3.5% uh, that was unique. And I wanted to take a moment to make a little punch list, if I could, of some of the things that Jim Watson's genome tell us about us. Guys, please don't read ahead. <laughs> First of all, we are individuals. Each of us has significant variation from one another. These variation, as you've been taught today, come in many forms. You can have one letter difference, you can have sentences removed, and you can have paragraphs copied. Now, what's also interesting 
is, as Richard mentioned, over the last 15 years, in parallel to people working on genomics, the people in genetics have done their job, and there's wonderful databases that have approximately 1,000 genes that have been characterized to be associated with specific human disease. So what about Jim? Well, in 310 genes that are in this database, Jim does have a mutation that changes the protein. In 23 of these proteins, the change is identical to a change that has previously been cataloged to affect human health. 